Okay, welcome back. Here we go again. <laughs> ah, just can't leave well enough alone. So I figured I'd record this right from the beginning for posterity. Don't know if I'll post it as a video, but eh, probably will. All right, so here's the story. Here in Lake City, based on three, did I have three op sessions so far? Pseudo op, anyway, yep, yeah, on a couple op sessions I've had. The issue here was with the way the spurs lined up. You come off the main line, it runs up here to what was going to be a small industry here, and then it's the other way back into there, which is going to be that building, which I really like, and I'm going to use it. It's going to be a scratch bash of two of these. It's a Monster Model Works Robertson paper. I just love the way the kit looked. I actually got a hold of, uh, uh, what was the gentleman's name? Jimmy. Back when he was in business, unfortunately he sold it. And it's got uh, a much better paying full-time job, so I understand it. So anyway, he actually custom made, not, he modified the kits for me. Because the way I wanted it to sit, I didn't want a door on this side. And he, he did some custom work for me. So, and again, I like the way it looks. I want to use it. Okay, so that's going to go there. It was going to go there initially anyway, but the problem is because of this track and maybe having two spots and coming across here and having to get cars, you know, behind an engine and a car spotted there, you're really, really restricted in how you can switch this. And it's, it's really, a, anyway, it's a pain. It really was very poorly planned. So way to go, Rob. So what I'm going to do, all right, here's what I'm going to do to alleviate that. Uh, and oh, and another issue that came up operationally is there's no crossover here. And you really need something here because when you come out of the Olean branch here into Wallace Junction, trains come out and they're on the inside track. All right, so they come chugging along, la, 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 around the peninsula. Boop, boop, they come up here, so they're still on the inside and it can't go and they're still on the inside basically they stay on the inside until all the way around and they come around here and they come into front of you so here is the first place they can cross over so if the trains go into Eugene he's got to cross over and go here so basically he ties up that main line you know all the way from Wallace Junction to here and if you do which I've done if you bring a train See, coming this way out of Eugene, and you forget the crossover here, <laughs> you're on the wrong track. You can't go up the Olean branch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, it's going to be a manual hand throw crossover, not dispatch or control. It's a carryover from 18 not 90 or whatever. Anyway, cross over here. So if you need to cross over and you're coming, you know, on the, uh, on, this track and you need to be on this track to get the only branch you can come in here you can stop the staging agent comes out and helps you throws the crossover you cross over he can come back over and close it up behind you or vice versa going the other way so I'm, I'm gonna add that I'm gonna buy two Pico number eights they're on the way yes I could have built fast tracks but all my jigs and tools and everything are with a friend who is borrowing them so whatever I'll just buy two Pico number eights they're fine I'm going to put that right in here. And then this turnout's going to come out. So basically all this is going to come out. I'll probably save them. I'll save the tortoises and, and everything. And then I'm going to come off of here with a turnout. It has to be on number six, just based on the position and where it is in the curve and everything. Or coming off the curve. It's going to come up here. You can see I'm going to have to redo all this road, redo the crossing, redo the gates and everything. Eh, all right, fine. Come across here. To that, Pico number six right, and then one track will come up here on this side of the industry. The other track will continue along here, up here. It's going to come along here. That is the, I'm calling it the Lake City Green. It's the uh, uh, AC Gilmore kit that I built. There's a video on it recently where I took some shortcuts and whatnot, but I want to use that kit. That's so going to go there. And then I'm thinking, not totally sold yet, 
coming back to this, which is a cold trestle that I built years ago. I love it. I guess it needs some weathering, but I just think that is so, you know, 50s railroady. <laughs> so I may put that here. May you know depress it a little bit. Take off this top little piece of foam so it's almost track level. If I have to come up a little bit, it shouldn't be a big issue. And then the road will continue out to here. It'll meet this road coming up here. It'll continue along here. There's actually a piece of 1x4 missing to bring it out to here. So that road will continue along here. Maybe kind of turn, you know, like it's heading back into town. And then it'll come off here. Maybe come down a little grade here, a little hill for the coal trucks and everything to get into the that little coal area. Now this will probably be run by this by this same company. So maybe have a couple of out, but you know it won't, I don't, won't need a whole separate office or anything like that. It's run by this Lake City Feed and Grain and Coal. <laughs> All right, so that's what I'm thinking of doing. And then that makes it so when you come in here to work with your Eugene Turn. Everything's trailing point. There's no issues. You can pull up. You can switch away to your heart's content. The biggest handle you need in case a car's inappropriately placed in the train. No issues. You know, it just it's just a lot easier. And I think it's going to be a lot more smoother, and I kind of like it. And I'm also changing things. One thing I learned over here in Fairview, which I did not like, you see the sidings are behind the buildings. Well, that's, uh, I don't like it. You have to reach over. Anyway, so what I'm going to do over here, <clears throat> one of the reasons I made the conscious decision to put the track where it is, is the sidings are in front of the buildings. So when you come in to uncouple and do shifting and, you know, and you're switching, it's easier to reach. You're not having to reach over buildings to get to the uncouplers. So, okay, that's the way it's going to look, I think. So here it is, saved for posterity, before I start. And uh, let's keep plugging away here. All right, the MOW, MOW guys made some pretty good progress. Let's see, Route 18 here is closed. Going across the crossing, detours in place. They got the uh, old road out, the old track crossings out. I'm probably going to leave that in, then I can just scenic, in it, scenic it in. It shouldn't be a problem. I'm hoping to be able to save this and then when I get the new track in, just replace the road and go from there. I did take out the crossing gates because I knew, man, I knew sure as heck working around here I'd break them. Just take, you know, one slip of a spatula or something like that and boom. So they're out and then it gives me an opportunity also to repaint them. If I go back with them, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So that's out and I do have the new turnout that's going to go in there. I need to do a little, little bit of dress up over at the uh, at the bench and then down here you can see the crew is working hard on a on a weekend. Time and a half for these guys. And that turnout's out. I saved it. It'll be good. So now I'm just a matter of dressing up the, the road bed a little bit. A little bit. And then figuring out uh, somewhere in here will be the crossover. So I was going to just lay this track in. I said, nah, I can't do that yet. So I want to have the turnouts, and because I've got to take this track out, where the, no, the turnout's going to sit, and then probably some more over here. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to let it sit like that. Play it where it lays. And then we'll get back once I get the turnouts. And I can do that. I have to be really, really careful. I mean, taking the turnout out wasn't bad. Came in, you know, sprayed some water down. Cleared out the ballast, got underneath it with a real thin spatula, and it came up fine. But I gotta be real careful here when the track comes out for the turnout, because one, you know, one slip and yeah, there'll be some harsh language. Alright, let's get this dressed up. Let me let, let these guys knock off a little bit early. Get back at it when I get the new turnouts. All right, you guys may get a, may, may get a kick out of this. I, I just had to film this because uh, it was funny. So the super comes up. You know, it's uh, the guys are ready to go home. You know, one guy's finishing off, filling in the uh, the old hole there for the uh, 
crossover for the switch machine and everything like that. And the guy's working on the, in the embankment a little bit. And the super comes up and he says, put these barricades up. And they're like, what? Like, what? Are you, are you serious? They didn't think he was. They thought he was joking, but they could tell the way he was looking. Now, he was serious. I was like, you know, and <laughs> Cletus lost his mind. I mean, he, he was beside himself. He was, he, he's over there, like, you know, praying to God, trying to understand what in the world's going on. It's like, you might, we might as well just put a lawn chair up there because if a train comes up there, hey, that barricade ain't going to do crap, but you, know, you want it up there. So, hey, hey, put it up, and I, I, again, I talk Cletus in off the edge, and I said, look, just do it, Cletus, we'll go home. So there's one there, and then there's one at this end, which is even less of a stop. So, there you go. It was, uh, yeah, a real fun for a late Saturday. Again, you know, Cletus is losing his mind. The boss man comes up and wants to put up a barricade. <laughs> Ought to get a that coal train with a... ABA set of sharks. I would come growling up here and see if that barricade does anything. But all right, just thought I'd film that and uh, you know, hey, just uh, everyone give their uh, give their love to Cletus because he's about to lose his mind. All right, we're back. It's uh, it's a Sunday. Cletus uh, took the day off. He was just uh, uh, not in the right frame of mind. So it's a cleat. Just take the day off. I know it's double time, but just don't do it so he said fine let's go to church she's gonna chill out and relax take the day off all right so anyway so <laughs> see the crew got this turnout in this is our rescued number six out of the old factory and looks okay I didn't get it cut perfectly but it's hard to do that when you're doing retrofits like this and the only thing I noticed coming over it straight everything seems fine now this everything's gonna roll pretty good on the main line what I may do on the diverging route and you won't be able to see this but you have to just just trust me <laughs> the clearance here between the stock rail and the point is a little close and I just don't know if on certain cars if everything's not totally totally perfect if it might yeah, see it might no, I don't have the tortoise in here yet. So what I'm going to do is probably go back to the bench, unsolder this point, and just move it over a little tiny bit to get some more clearance. Easy to do. That's a nice thing about fast tracks. You can make, you know, you can do that kind of stuff to the turnout. So that'll help. I just don't want, you know, if you're backing up three or four cars, one car slightly out, you know, the wheel's a tiny bit out, and I didn't catch it or something like that. I just want to make sure it doesn't catch the point and cause derailments. Now I could fix it here in the layout, but I'd rather do it now. I'm going to pop this turnout back out. It's just laying there now and then fix it. So I think it's going to look okay. I, th I do think it's a little bit yet into the easement, but what I did here, I'll show you what I did. Let me just pause this and I'll show you <laughs> how I think it looks okay. All right. <laughs> you probably can't see this, but here's what I did. So I walked to the end of the peninsula, sighted up the main line, and said, you know, does it look okay? Does it look, you know, relatively even coming off the curve there in through the turnout? And, you know, it looks all right. I'm not saying it's perfect. See, it's probably a little bit yet in the easement where it's coming off there. But you know what? I think it'll be okay. And again, most of the time, you know, most tr trains on that track will be heading, you know, you can't see my finger, but they're heading over toward Fairview usually. Right hand forward. So I think it'll be all right. I think it looks okay. Not perfect, but again, you know, you're doing the this retrofit and stuff. You got to have to make some uh, compromises. So, all right. Let's get that uh, turnout fixed up and, and get it installed. All right. The boys call it a day, but I uh, had a pretty good day today. They got the turnout reinstalled, and uh, it's down, and I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. I didn't uh, glue it down. I put a little track nail here, track nail there. It's, it's down nice and flat. It seems pretty pretty good. I didn't solder things in yet because I you know, want to make sure things are working okay. But it is rewired, and it'll snarl away with the tortoise. Everything seems to be... This track's not laid, it's just kind of sitting there just for... But everything seems... 
the growl of the tortoise. That goes up to Cletus's barrier up there. So everything seems to be very nice. All right. So you know, I'll come in and eh, probably not now. I think it's time for a beer, but <laughs> I'll come in and solder it up. It's ready to go. This is two scrap pieces of Pico Code 83 I had. Just got them soldered together for the spur to come in. Somewhere in here will be the other turnout. I'm not sure yet. I still need to lay that out. And then, you know, figure out where the turnout's going to go to the one big industry and then come up here to the feed and grain and to the coal dock, I hope. And then, what this does, I was also thinking, since this spur is coming out, this area here now gets freed up to have some fun. Um, and what I've, this kit I built a while ago, it's a railroad hotel. It's actually a Northern Pacific. I think it's by, um, oh boy, who is it? I want to say C.C. Crow. Who's the other, uh, anyway, I, I can find out. I forget. It's been so long. But it's a nice kit. I build it. I like it. It's all detailed on the interior. Now it is, obviously, it says Reading on it, which is not quite appropriate for now. <laughs> Unless it's a reading room. <laughs> but I, again, it's, it's it was built. I spent a lot of time on it. I did actually... That's one of my earlier ones, so it's not super pretty. But the interior is detailed. It's all light, lit. Top and bottom floor. The back and the kitchen's all detailed. So, you know what? It's like, I really would like to use this. <laughs> and now... <laughs> he doesn't break this freaking kit. He just got it out and broke it. We got an antenna. It got a little banged up over the years, but the roof is new. Um, that's not the original kit roof. I actually did a standing seam roof on it. But I like it. It's got this coal, this cool coal bin. I need to remember where it goes. I think it goes right here. But it doesn't seem to fit quite right. Anyway, you know what? I'd like to do that. So, what if... Since I have all this room, I mean, this could actually fit here. Because you can see that's where the track's going to be. So I have room. You know, a railroad hotel here. This road will still come up here. So I could put a house here and some houses down here. And make it like a nice little town. I like it. Uh, I don't know if I want to keep all that. Actually, I'd like to. We have a little side street come back to, uh, you know, Cletus's garage or something like that. And that's a... You know, some you know, small town type stuff. I think that could be really fun. Street lights along the road and everything. I mean, that, that, oh man, yeah. Now we're talking. And then over here, again, we'll have the industries. I may not even have something I could put here. Because I actually have a fair amount of room. You know, that goes back. as a big industry here. The feed and grain. And a coal trestle here. Okay, that's cool. But, you know, don't forget, this actually comes out to here if I want to. So, again, I could, I have a meat packing plant. Won't be rail served, but, okay, you know, could be here. Or, again, you know, houses, smaller industries, a gas station, a nice 1950s gas station. Yeah. Actually, I have one. So, I like it. I'm kind of psyched. I get to use some of the stuff that I built and I didn't think I was going to be able to use. In terms of the crossing, here's what I'm thinking. I'm not positive yet. All the tortoises are there, you know, th that drove the old gates. But I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm going to be a curmudgeon. You know, flashing gates with bells are nice. And then the bell, I can set it so it turns off when the gates go down. But oftentimes, i found that kind of thing just gets annoying. So what I'm thinking of doing is I like like the Walthers, you know, the 1950s era. Maybe in here, if I don't put the hotel, have a you know a crossing guard tower, which is obviously era appropriate. Have some of the Walthers gates that can be manually controlled. Because when you come up here and do, and if you were up up here going to do some switching, you know, the gates go ding 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 ding, and it, it would just get annoying. So you're probably like, Rob, can I please turn them off? So what I'll do, maybe, you know, have 
a set of gates here, a set of gates there, the cool old looking ones. And you say, okay, when you come into town, if you want to, throw this switch and the gates will go down. You know what I mean? Now, I know, it's, oh, but, but what about if a train comes and they should go down? You know, who cares? It's just a freaking model railroad. And again, some of that automatic stuff, kind of like sound equipped locomotives. <laughs> You get the whole layout going, and it just gets annoying sometimes. So I'm not sure yet, but so I may go away from the automatic crossing, make it a manual thing, where as the crew comes around, he can also kind of be the, the little crossing guy that has to. Now I'm going to say they did, they did. He doesn't have to come down and hand crank him. They've remoted him up to his uh, little shed, <clears throat> but you know, just have a little toggle on the face shut, click it, and then the gates go down. Train goes by, click it, gates go up again. So, I don't know, we'll see. But again, some of the times the automatic stuff, which is like, we all think we have to have, but it actually gets annoying after a while. So, all right, so more to come. I do need to get the two number eights for the crossover. You can see I gotta put those in. Uh, but everything else I have. So that should be, shouldn't be too long. It, it will take a little bit of real careful work to get that track out, like I said. Or I'll put a spatula through the station, which would really aggravate me. But uh, looking good, getting there. So I uh, was able to save the crossing. Everything seems nice and smooth with the Mr. Lehigh Valley helping us out here. Okay, more to come. Looking, this will be fun. I'm really kind of having some like some ideas about what I could do in here. Corner gas station. Oh yeah, there you go. All right, anyway, <laughs> more to come. <laughs> got across the gate all right so I couldn't help myself I took out the I do have one of the Walther's pneumatic ones and I just had to enlarge the holes where the Tomar signals were and just pop these in to see what they look like now I think this one now uh, that looks good that's okay um, I think I saw pictures a lot of them might have had two but you know what I might not go with that because it doesn't look quite right I'm not sure how another one would look if you, anyway and the nice thing is these line up exactly with what I already have underneath there for driving the old ones. So it might not be that bad. Now this one, obviously, is quite a ways away. Because before, you know, the track was here. Probably should move it up. But that gets into more work. I, I want to, can I come up with a reason why it would be that far back? Could it be there used to be a track here way back in time? They probably would have moved it anyway, but, you know, back in uh, the early 20s, something came up here. It's long since abandoned and torn down, and houses and the hotel were built and all that kind of fun stuff. But the cool thing is, if I can do it like that, it literally, I'll try to show this. It may not. Um, where's my, see, that is the, the drive. Uh, you probably can't see the wire. But it's, it's lining up perfectly with it. I mean, the tortoise is still in. You know, I didn't take out any of that stuff. The other one's way back there. Uh, where is it there? I mean, it's got the tortoise. It's got the the drive for it. So it's all there. Uh, and it's pretty easy to, I would think, to connect. I just need to noodle around an idea why that would be like that. But okay, anyway. So that's what I'm contemplating here in... Lake City. Alrighty, the new number eights are here. And again, I just decided to buy some Pico number eights. Because all my fast tracked, fast tracked, <laughs> fast track tools and jigs and fixtures are with a friend. So, anyway, so that's fine. I uh, didn't really feel like stopping and building turnouts anyway. Eh. Alright, so. These are set up, now I'm deciding where to cut the original track to fit these in. This was already done because the old turnout was there. <clears throat> and then what I did initially, when I set it up, I had it so uh, the switch stand or whatever is kind of right at the end of the platform. But what that did was it put this throw bar right on top of this. And that would be annoying trying to get a tortoise in there. So I said, okay, I can either scooch it this way or scooch it that way. I scooch it this way, just because, I mean, not, not really a big deal. Making sure I still have enough room, you know, to fit the tortoise 
to be turned around with the throw bar on this side and the box this side and still can get in there and appropriately get it mounted and I, and I can and then on this side I want to make sure that I'm in the tangent here looks like it is again a very unscientific way that I did it <laughs> was I went down to the again to the end of the peninsula and just sighted up the track and said does that look like it flows nice and it does so good enough for me so now I have these marked here here and here and I'm gonna get a uh, cut off wheel on the Dremel and then just come in and that's the official sound for that get the track out and get these set in get the holes drilled for the tortoise what I'm going to do on the tortoises, or try to do, which I actually did do on this one that worked okay. Again, this is not the way to do it, I don't think, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. <laughs> Again, don't don't get upset. I'm going to drill the hole. Um, what did I use before? I think like a 5, 6, or a 15, 16, fourths. I got to check. Anyway. And then, what I'm going to do, it's a little bit more of a challenge, because in the Picos, you can't really get the points easily to center a throw, which you can on the fast tracks. So you just kind of move it there. Anyway, I think I'll be able to, to make it work. And I'm going to leave the spring in. I think the tortoises that I have, I use 039 music wire, will have enough oomph to throw them over. And I can always test it. Because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, you know, drill the hole down through the roadbed, mount the tortoise, center it on the throw, bring the Pico in, I may have to put some weight on it because it might want to move it just because of the throw bar, you know, because the points are either normal or reverse. You can't really set it to center. Get it in, weight it down, try throwing it by hand, which you can do very carefully. Make sure everything works. And then it's, it's a lot easier to do that and have the throw bars up and bring the turnout down as opposed to putting the turnout in, crawling underneath, trying to get <laughs> the tortoise, the throw wire up, Get it where it's and then get it in position, drill the pilot holes without actually, you know, wanting to go outside and scream. So I'm, I'm gonna try that. We'll see how it works. Alright, enough enough blib blabbing. Let's just get to cutting, cleaning, and installing. Thirty minutes later. Alright, so we got the uh, old track out. The roadbed. Sand it down a little bit. I'll come in and touch it up. A little bit more, but everything fits nice. Again, the very unscientific look from the Independent Peninsula. It looks like it flows nice. I did notice on this rail here, again, because it's micro-engineering track, if you look at a cross side, it pops out of the cast on ties. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm being mean. But micro-engineering track will do that. It'll bust out of those little things in a heartbeat, so I might have to do a little, little, little spike in here. Although it actually might line up nice once I get the, the Pico turnout in and, and secured. And everything looks pretty good. I seem to have cut things pretty nicely. I'm not going to try to do any filing, which, is, which amazes me to no end. Um, on the Pico turnouts, I did cut the rather large head ties off on both sides. and I'll, I'm not sure I'm going to have the head ties come this way. Uh, probably will because again this this is a hand throw it's not going to be dispatcher controlled it's a left over from you know early in the 20th century or whatever when it just it's not it's not interlocked or anything well I shouldn't say when I throw the turn out or unlock it it'll the dispatcher will know what's going on but it's not controlled by the dispatcher actually the operator has to come out and throw it <laughs> the crew comes up just kind of you know Toots the horn, burp, burp, burp. throw that crossover, you lazy bomb. And he comes on, there's a freaking brick, 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 train crew. So I'll probably add a little, you know, the wooden, the kind of little wooden planks coming over here to cross the track so we can get to this one. And then this one at this end is right off the end of the platform. So maybe I'll build it up a little bit, you know, just to make, because, you know, they're, they're, bring it over, have a nice little platform. I don't know. That was some fun. But for the most part, you know, the, the station operator here at Lake City, because they are still there in the mid 50s, will come out and do it. Then the train goes by, and then he's going to wait, and he's going to go back and throw it, lock, lock it, call the dispatcher, and say, yep, everything's lined and locked normal. So 
this piece that came out of here I'll clean it up and be able to fit it in nicely right here not a big deal it's got some ballast on it but that'll be easy to clean up knock it out clean it it's all painted the same you can see the paint doesn't quite match I did take the turnouts out and sprayed them with um, what did I use a little, little bit of uh, Vallejo Panzer gray just for the rails and then I kind of came down with some of the German field gray but it's a little bit too gray so either I'll touch it up before I do it but I want to get it in and look and see what track I'm going to use because you also got to paint this now that'll be hidden by the crossing but you know get these painted as well I have another turnout here to be painted so I kind of want to wait and do that all at one time then get everything all blended in I don't know if you can tell I did add some details to the turnouts ah just for fun I don't really know why but you can see I had a at the end of the frog there there's a little tie bar there and I actually have I think they're from Proto 87 some details along the frog it's going to be hard to see, but anyway, and just for fun, I did it. Added the guardrail support, I guess that's what they are, from Details West. Oops, pulled the camera right, Bob. All right, anyway, just for just for some fun, just because it's, you know, why not? All right, so let's get those back over to the bench, get them ready for install. i got to mark the holes now for the tortai. Get this piece cleaned up and get it cut, ready to go back in, and keep forging ahead. Where's Cletus? How come he's not here helping me? All right, I figured I'd show you this because this is not normal. <laughs> well, the turnout is throwing normal right now, but that's not what I mean. All right, so I got this up, first Pico number eight in. Uh, the other side, I just touched up a little bit and just painted over it because I put some of um, you know, some spackle in there just to. There were some divots when I cleaned it up just to make it nice and smooth. But that's okay, that's, that's going to dry up. But I want to talk about this. So what I did on this one, for the tortoise, and again, don't follow these instructions. I'm just telling you what I do, because that's not right. If you read about it, or anyone's going to say, that's not the right thing to do. But that's that's the way we are on this channel. So what I did, I, I left the spring in. I know you can take them out, and probably people say, no, 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 you can't do that. If you've got a Pico and use a tortoise, you have to take the spring out. Well, you don't have to do anything, so that's what I did. Now, the way to set it up, <clears throat> again, normally, you know, they tell you to put the tortoise carefully, which you can do by hand, right, to center a throw. And then put the point center a throw, line things up, and, and, you know, by magic, try to get your tortoise in there. Much different ways. There's a, there's a template you can use. Although mine, after 80 turnouts, is just shot. So, <laughs> it doesn't work very well. All right, so what I did for this one is I put the tortoise where it's going to be normal all the way up I don't need a whole lot of throw in fact I wish it was a way I don't know if I could glue some styrene in here to, to reduce the throw or not anyway and then what I did I crawled underneath took my four number four by half inch screws down in the drill took this up and like I said the turnouts in the normal position Put it up and then scooched it a little bit over because it's not in center of throw. So if I just went up like this, it probably isn't enough tension and it probably would throw too much in the reverse direction. So I just kind of scooched it over a little bit, drilled one hole, one pilot hole, took my screwdriver, which I magnetized, which I recommend you do so the screw won't fall off when you're under there trying to do 18 things at once you need 14 pairs of hands and you only got two so you know with one holding the tortoise best I could the other hand doing the drill putting the drill down getting this with a screw putting the one in now one will hold it up it it does move a little bit but then what I did I said okay because again you just can't do everything you don't have enough hands so then I dropped it <clears throat> moved it over again by hand, drilled it, put the drill down, got the other screw, and I have two of them in now. Okay, so there's two, and I'll put the other two in, but actually two is fine. Two would hold a tortoise up. So that's how I got this up. Again, I didn't do it the way they say. Put the points and the, and the tortoise center a throw, put everything up, align it, and then I just didn't do that because I'm a rebel. 
and if I look at this, it seems to work okay. Now, one of my concerns is if I'm off, you know, do I have too much pressure on the points when it throws? Because I do use 037 uh, piano wire uh, that I, you know, that I got. Actually, got it through through fast tracks. Much much bigger than what comes with a tortoise, and it, I, I just like it. A little more robust. So everything does seem. I don't know how well this will show up. Cause it's gonna get. I think I can see a little bit of a shadow here. But well, let me try something here. Let me just uh, bear with me here. We're having. Okay, it might be a little bit brighter, but I just changed the uh, f-stop a little bit. And if I throw this, you will see it start to go and then snap over. Right about there is halfway. I'm going real slow. Boom. Then it, so it does actually snap right about, if I'm feeling this and watching it, there's, there's halfway. Okay, so it does start to go halfway. Which means all this, whoo, quite a bit, is actually extra pressure. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll see. So there is a fair amount of pressure on that. Yeah, I mean, again, it, I think at that, but I don't really know. I've never done this with a Pico. So I'm going to let it go. It, it seems to work nice. Definitely not going to pick the points, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Let's see again. If I come, if I come over, right about, right, where's halfway? Right about there is halfway. By feel, and I'm, I'm just feeling underneath. And then it goes, and that's the extra. You know, after it snaps, that's kind of the extra force I'm putting on it. So if I come back, where's halfway? Not yet. Right there. Just a little, that's maybe a little bit past halfway, but then all this, just listen to a growl. Whew, that seems like a fair amount, that's extra. <laughs> that's the extra force that I'm putting against the points on the tie bar. Now, it seems pretty robust, so I think it'll be okay. And the one thing that I'll do, and one thing you can do, the tortoises are designed to operate on 12 volts, but you can reduce that voltage. All that does is make them work slower. So what I'll probably do is put some dropping resistors on this because I'm going to feed it with 12 volts. It's, it's going to be a manual. And again, it's going to be manually thrown. Oh, no, my F-stop's way too. You know, from out here on the fascia, you know, the crew or the simulated station agent comes out, has to throw the crossover. It's, it's just going to be a toggle out here on the fascia. Well, I can reduce that voltage down, 9 volts, 6 volts, whatever. So it won't be quite as fast make a little bit slower, just boom, and then let's snap over, as opposed to jamming it with 12 volts, which is, you know, going to move it over pretty quickly. So, I'll try that, just to gingerly try it. Again, I've never done this. If anyone has, and you and you comment that I'm wrong, just, you know, give me some real-life experience. Don't just say, I, I think you're wrong, because <laughs> you're probably right. But, you know, I, I think it's going to hold up. Again, looking at the points... On a Pico, they're they're pretty rugged. I mean, I did snip off the outer, those little outer things with the holes on them because I'm coming right through the center of it with the tortoise wire. And you know, these are. I, I hope so. We'll see. Worst case, another thing I'm going to do. All right, just in case, I'm totally bizarre here and just breaking every model rarity rule ever known to man. I'm not going to glue this in. What I'm probably going to do is just put maybe one or two. You know, a little tax in it because it, it's it's up a little bit but not bad you know maybe one here and one back here and you can see what I did here I have a, um, a fast tracks mainline PCB board tie because again you know this is micro engineering and you look at a crosswise and it pops out of the the little anchors in there it's, it's out like back to here maybe about here so this is what I'm gonna do here I mean it, it this holds it pretty straight with the, with the rail joiner there. But if I do this, gauge it, and then just solder it, it's definitely going to be fine. So that's why I put that tie there. And then, you know, it's already gapped and painted. You won't even notice that it's there. And then I'll just hold this down with maybe a tack and a tack or something like that. Because once the ballast is in, it's going to hold it pretty good. And, worst case, if I go breaking points and, 
the whole world comes crashing down on me. All right. And, you know, because I'm not going to glue this one in or the other one. I can just pull those tacks out very carefully, take the turnout out, and put a fast tracks in there. So that's the plan. So that's what I'm going to do. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> this definitely doesn't follow the instructions for a tortoise. And we'll see. You know, the, the proof will be over time if these points hold up. Now, again, this turnout's not going to be used. This crossover isn't going to be used all the time. It's there kind of just in case, you know, if you come out, well, it will be used, actually, if you come out of off the Olean branch into Wallace, you're on the wrong track by direction of, uh, of traffic. So you can come up here, cross over, you know, to get onto the old right-hand forward type stuff. Or if you're going to, you know, if you need to meet a train here or something like that, and because normally you'd be on this track coming out of Wallace Junction because there's no crossover. Again, poor planning on my part. There should be, this crossover should really be down there in Wallace Junction to get the train on the right track. But, oh well. So, if something else is coming and, you know, you got to have, have to do a meet, at least here you can cross over. And not have to do it all the way back over here. And I might have showed this before. Because the only other crossovers that are available, then, you know, are back here at, in Fairview. That's a pretty long way to run. Not really. It's it's only about 12 feet. But theoretically, it's quite a distance. So anyway, that's why I'm putting this in here. All right, so stop blabbing. I got that one in. Let that dry. Might do the same thing here. Get this in. It's all cut and ready to go. Try it again with the tortoise. This one went okay. Not a lot of screaming and swearing and pulling out hair I don't have. It got in okay try this one and then get them wired up and then try it with power and see how it all works all right so there you go that's what we're doing here at the uh with the tortoises the tortai here in lake city okay so that turnout is now in the other two tortoise mounting screws are in and what i did which is more than enough i put in two of these i can't even see them I think they're Atlas track nails. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent sure. They've been in my, you know, in my uh, workbench little drawer forever. I think that's what they are. And I didn't want to overdo it. Be very careful with it. I drilled. I think a number fifty-two hole for clearance. Um, I just use a pin vise. Yeah, you could use a Dremel, but I just did it by hand. And I put one. Where did I put it? Here. And then here. So, did that, set it in, you know, took a punch, and then very carefully, very gently, got it set in. Okay, that's nice, it's down, it's good, it's flat, I don't need to do any more, no more overkill, so I'm not going to, not going to glue it in, I'm not going to do that for all the track, although this, this one piece here is going to be a piece of, um, la, 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 what is this stuff, the garbage, oh, microengineering. <laughs> That piece is going to go there. I may do the same thing. I may just glue that in because if I have to rip that out and ruin it, not a big deal. <laughs> Microengineering track should be ruined anyway. Then I got to get this one in. Again, let that paint dry a little bit, although it's probably fine. It's not meant to be a work of art just to kind of cover up the roadbed. So, all right. One half of the crossover in. Yay! All right, just for fun, what I decided to try here, I brought the tortoise contacts on the, on this tortoise 1 and 8 down to a terminal block. I'm going to wire them over to the other ones so they all, both, so both turnouts throw at the same time. I figured, okay, so what I do is I brought some jumpers out, and I have me a 9-volt battery. I want to see, okay, does 9 volts seem, you know, better than 12? 12 would just be faster. And is, a, is it enough to throw it? Does it look okay? Da, 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 da. So... I have it set up now, and the turnout is normal. So if I just simply reverse these, I'm trying to do this, holding the camera and doing everything at once. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this, and so we can see how it throws. All right, so now I connect this up. Okay, now if we go back the other way. Reverse the polarity. 
get over that. See, that's is that visible? Uh, sorry for being so shaky here, but I'm trying to do multiple things at once here. And as you know, this channel is kind of lame. Okay, so. Mm. Yeah, I definitely think I favored it more the other way. All right, so now that's nine volts. I, I like that. You know, not not too fast. Seems to bring it over and it snaps nice. All right, now what I'm going to do here? What do I have here? One point five. Well, don't tell me. Don't tell me. Uh, three, uh, six, six volts. You got six volts. Okay, so I have six volts here. So I'm going to hook it up again. Let's see what this is like. Yeah. Eh, I don't like it as much. I don't know why. I just, I'm just not liking it as much. Let's go back the other way. Get in there. Here we go. I mean, it does it. It's okay. It wouldn't be bad. Again, that's 6 volts. But me, I'm kind of preferring... I'm going to see if I have this right. Okay, so now we're going to be back on 9 volts. I don't know. Might like that better. I don't know why. Split the difference. Go 7.5. <laughs> Alright. So that's. I think I'll try to go around 9 volts. Now I, I, I have to calculate the resistor I need. Like I said. So then that's dropped down to a terminal board. That's going to come over to where the other tortoise is, which is, uh, again, pardon the shakiness, this one. Now on this one, I brought one set of the Form C contacts down because I need to know the turnout position. Now I'm not going to throw this by the dispatcher, but it, it still needs to know, the CMRI needs to know the turnout position, which I can do with this. Either, either it's open or grounded. If it's grounded, it means it's reverse. If it's open, it's normal. Now, the signal system knows and all that kind of fun stuff. So this I'll put here, wire it down, and then on this terminal board, which will be a five point, I'll bring the one and eight from the other over together, and then 12 volts will come in. I'll bring it out to here. I'll have a resistor out here to drop it down to yeah, probably nine, and then I'll hear, boop, 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 just do it by hand. I don't know if I, maybe I'll go with one of those lock, unlock type fun things. Eh, I'm not sure yet, but for now, at least to get it back in operation, they get it working. I just want to get a switch, you know, get a toggle out here, so I can throw the turn out. So all right, so that's what I'm going to do. So there you go. So make sure you have a uh, some battery holders and some handy dandy clip leads, and you can test leads, and you can do all kinds of good stuff. So all right, again, I don't like I don't like the six volts. Sorry, Mr. Six volts. I'm I'm not anti six volts. I don't want to. I don't want the six volt lobby coming after me. I just think the nine volt was a little bit better. So all right. Here we go. More to come. All right. One more thing to check on the Pico tracks. And I learned this the hard way. Pico, Pico turnouts. I learned this the hard way. All right. What I did you see in here, I take off the little piece of wire that Pico has soldered in the bottom there. Um, and I solder my own 22 gauge wire coming through to power the frog. That, no, no issue there. Okay. Well. You won't be able to see this, I'm sure, because it's dark and I can see I'm casting a shadow. But the first one, a couple times I did this, I just went in there and went wiggle, 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 broke it off. Well, gentle viewers, these are all connected in here with that same wire and, and it's soldered together. And if you do that, if you go to, uh, you know, Godzilla on it, what will happen is that those little wires might break off. And then what will happen is you won't have continuity on the whole frog because what happens is that little connector I believe is right in here and it connects all the all the frog together this this piece these two pieces of rail and that one well, if one of those breaks because you go crazy on it what will happen is you'll lose power and I did like to one of these tracks or both of them rails you'll you won't be powered and you'll be going what, what what's going on and these, especially on number eights, it's a big, it's a big area that, that's powered by that. You could change that. You could cut the gap back here, but I just use it right in the turnout because I power them with frog juicers. Not an issue. So as long as you're powering the frog, you're fine. 
but I do that and then <laughs> and then I come in and check so okay now I don't know if I can do this because I don't know if I can okay I don't have enough hands maybe I could set it uh, no you're not going to be able to see but anyway with my get a multimeter whatever one you have put it on continuity and then just come in I'll just do this so you can hear it beep but you're not going to be able to see anything but I'll check across all rails of the frog so then I know that I have continuity because if you do that and you rip it out you won't have continuity now what you can do and what I did do <laughs> I think it was might be on the, one of the videos in staging I was able to come in and solder a wire from here this end of the frog rail over to here it was a little like a number 26 jumper Boop. it wasn't fun but it worked because otherwise the, this whole piece here was not powered that happened at least at least two times before so just just FYI just be careful on the Pico if you take that wire off and then when I'll come up and I'll solder you know to the web of the rail in fact I already have this one picked out and scraped and ready to drop that little feeder through just be careful because if you get too crazy your your entire frog won't be powered so just trust me that one I am telling you what to do just to test it because I learned the hard way <laughs> And you don't want to get in there and have it somewhere inaccessible and find out that the frog isn't powered or one of the rails or both of these rails is most likely what it would be. But you ripped it apart, you're going to have an issue with the frog. So just FYI. Okay, real quick, then I'm done. Going to have some dinner. You know, it's quarter of nine at night. I got into this and wanted to finish. So all the track's in. I got the tortoise in on this one. Isn't perfect. It works. <laughs> Only that I mean, I think I have it off a little bit, but but with the spring, it, it, it throws it just fine. So then I wired this tortoise to this tortoise, have my nine volt battery, and now it's normal. So I'm going to all go ahead and throw it to reverse, and you can see you know because of the snap action because of the. <laughs> It does kind of snap, almost like it's got a uh, solenoid on there. I'll just try to hold it up so you can see what it goes. Here we go. So it kind of goes click, click. Yeah, no, it's not great. And of course, if I had the spring removed, it probably wouldn't do that. But I don't know if I can. I can't see in the viewfinder because I'm holding it up, trying to do this, hold the camera, and then do this. Okay, so they snap a little bit, whatever. Again, that works fine. Okay, so that's done. Uh, that was a good evening. Got everything done, wired up. Now I need to come in, add a tie here, a couple other ties, and do some soldering. Drop the frog feeders down. I have to drill the one for this one. I forgot where I'm going to put it. And get those soldered up, get the juices in. Now there's some rewiring of the blocks underneath anyway okay so that's that there they are ideal yeah probably not maybe i should take the spring out we'll see but anyway they're in they work um i do need to figure out if i'm going to need to trim that throw bar a little bit because so i did test it if it's just right a katie one of those katie uh magnetic air hoses will hit it barely but anyway all right we'll see Okay, enough babbling. I'm hungry. Time to get something to eat. Alrighty, got the uh, track in, you know, where I did the soldering and dropped the feeders and whatnot. And I got everything kind of painted up and somewhat better matched. So that's that's all done. And then what I decided to do, well, well let me, first of all, let me show what I did here on the blocks. So the way this was wired before... This is only for those that may be interested. I'll try to make this visible. All right, so starting down here, this is Wallace Junction, which is down over there where the creamery is. All right, so you come out of Wallace Junction, you come up around the peninsula, and I had two blocks, a 9A block and a 9B block. That was because 9B was used to turn the flashers on up here, the crossing in Lake City. 
because I didn't want obviously I didn't want the gates to go on as soon as you left Wallace Junction. That would just be crazy. So it's better here. So what I did, for instance, in, in this case, I could have just soldered across the gap, but I said, nah, you never know. I, I may I, I know I've talked about making it manual. I may want to go back to automatic. So I left the gap, and all I did under the layout was basically wire the 9A bus, connected it to the 9B bus, left enough slack, left it run all the way back to the CMRI board. So if I ever want to go back, all I have to do is separate them, and everything's still there. The gap's still there. The run's back to the CMRI node are still there. So it wouldn't be that difficult to go back to having these gaps if I ever want to go back to automatic operation. Okay. So then the same thing, so from after the signal bridge, which is right behind the Diet Coke and everything, which is right here. So blocks 9A are up around the peninsula. 9B comes up to the signal bridge. Then I go to, that's actually 9 and 10 for the two tracks. Then I have 11 and 12. And very similarly, go back to this, so you can see this here. All right, so you come out of the signal bridge, and then you're coming into Lake City. You have 11A, 12A, which come up to the crossing. Then you had the island, which was LC, X1, LC, X2. That was the island. Then you have 11B, 11C, which goes to the swing gate, and then that's the power district. This is a different booster, different power district. And again, this is gapped. So when it comes into 11B, it would turn the gates on. And 11B would run from roughly the other side of the island, which is now right about the end of that turnout. And that gap is somewhere about here. Somewhere. So that turns on the flasher, the, the crossing. Again, I didn't want to do it, you know, as soon as he leaves the signal in Fairview. Or it would have been the power district, which is actually right here now, because the, the gate's still powered through this district. So you, you would cross the gate, and the gates would go down. You cross the swing gate, and the crossing gates in Lake City would go down. That's too early. So I moved it over to here. Might even be a little bit too big, but again, at the time I set it up, it was with Steve. We were running, you know, modern power, fast intermodals, Amtrak trains, etc., etc. So anyway, but everything's still there. The gaps are still there, and even on this side, when I connected basically 11A to LCX1 to 11B to 11C, but the runs are all still there for each of these blocks back to the CMRI node, and the gaps are still in the track. So again, not too terrible if I ever want to go back and re-automate the crossing. Everything's still there. So it's just a matter of breaking some connections. And most of them I did on terminal boards. So it's just a matter of breaking the connection, connecting back to the original bus, the sub bus. This is a DCC block sub bus. So not that big a deal. Now, I did notice one slight issue. Because I had my friendly RS-11 working and he worked on track one here was fine no issues back here because of this turnout and because of this gap here because you have to gap it that's the frog on the pico turnout comes up to here and it's gapped right there for the island well <laughs> this is not powered from here to here. I mean, I, I connected this block to this block. That's great, but there's no feeder in here. You know, it would have been fine if it wasn't for the turnout, but since I gapped it here, I have to add a feeder to, to this. Now, I could, if I so desired, solder a jumper across this, but then again, that makes it a little more kludgy to try to undo it. I mean, you could just cut it, but... I may just go ahead, solder a, a feeder to here, down to the bus, and be done with it. That doesn't hurt. I mean, I don't really need it that close, because the other feeder is right on the other side here. But, okay. So, again, you got to be careful when you add turnouts with insulated rail joiners. And I've done this a lot. 
every now and then I'll forget a section. So that's why I just run the locomotive and, and find it. Because he came cruising up here and all of a sudden, boop, he went dead. And I said, ah, I knew right what it was. I said, oh, gap. Gap. No feeder. All right, so the next thing to do is add this feeder. Give it another quick test to make sure it works and that I got the polarity right. And then I got the ballast in, so I'll go ahead and get these things ballasted. Um, get the details done, maybe add the, the crossing here. Um, add that the head ties and, and whatnot and do all that. So, all right, so just, I know it's a little uh, rambly, bambly thing, but just, that, hey, th these are the things you come up, uh, come across when you're uh, doing track work, and especially when you're modifying track work, keeping old buses, connected buses together, <laughs> and trying to keep everything working. So, all right, let's get it fixed up, and we'll uh, get everything back in operation. Okay, 10 minutes later, got that feeder in and installed. It was easy because I had a terminal board down below where to go. I can always test it with the RR ramp meter, or the ramp meter here. I get that on that. This is the old location, 14K. And then just go right over that gap to the area where I added the feeder. Hey, we got power. We got the power in us. All right, but what fun is that? So I also have my little friend here. <sighs> Say hello there, Mr. RS11. And let's see. Now the track's dirty because I've been in here painting and stuff like that. So I do, do need to give it a good cleansing. I'm going bring this puppy in here and just make sure that... Uh, He'll run over it. So the gap is right there. He's on the gap. Now! Ah, okay. We seem to have the power. And the other gap is, of course, right there. And now he's on the frog. Okay. RS11, Mr. Lehigh Valley, thank you very much. Your work is done for the day. So now what I want to do... Let me get this guy off the... Oh, okay. Easy, easy, easy. I'll bring him up under, uh, just under the signal bridge there and let him he can come over and tap into that Diet Coke. <laughs> okay. Still have some more testing. I do want to get power to the tortoises. I can get my toggle out here in the fascia. i got to go back and forth through the turnout a couple times make sure that all works. I don't have any strange power incidents. This one, again, I can't really do a whole lot because I'm not ready to put this track in, but I guess I could bring the locomotive up and run as far as you can. And I got rail joiners. I mean, he may run all the way up here. I'm not sure. Just to verify that that turnout's good and nothing mischievous is going on. So, okay. Let's get back to work. There's where I added that feeder. And now it'll show up on the outside rail there. Oh, there it is. I'll go ahead and paint that up and drop a little bit more ballast in there, and away we go. Okay. Easy peasy. Let's get back to getting this thing ready to go. Okay. What kind of tomfoolery have we here, folks? All right. I figured I'd show this. Here's what I'm going to do for the 9 volts to power the crossovers. Yep, you can do resistors, and that's fine. Or even a 9-volt battery if you really wanted to. But what I'm going to do is I saw these little dudes. I think it was on a video by the DCC guy or something like that. Um, talking about different types of electronic components. It's a little tiny uh, buckboard. It basically drops the input down from your input down to, I don't know, about a half volt or something like that. So I figured I'd, I'd try it. What the heck? I can't, I can't resist. Tiny little thing. Bought them on eBay. I got 10 of them for... I think six ninety five. So you're talking about seventy cents each. Um, you gotta be careful. I did blow one up. This one's actually failed. I had the polarity reversed, <laughs> so it does matter on these because I had it plugged in and like, hmm. Right away, I was like, uh oh, the magic smoke came out. So anyway, so just be careful with the polarity. It does show it on the back uh, how to hook them up, but they are hard. And then you just adjust it. If I can do this here with one hand and. Holding the camera. Let me see if I can get this to go. So there's the max. I'm not in the 1114. I swing it the other way. Let's 
dropping, dropping, dropping. Of course, I can't do this with one hand. And hold the camera. Drop, 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 jump. Okay. All the way down to about point. Man, it's a little unstable there at the, at the low end. Point five, call it point five. And then, like I said, it's adjustable. So I'm also thinking about maybe using these for LEDs in the building. You know, bring it up to about three volts. Because it'll, if it'll stay, it's hard to tweak this with that little screw. But all right, anyway. So what I'm going to do for this is probably try to set it right about eight volts, just for the fun of it. How close can I get it by holding the camera and trying to swing this little tiny screw in this pot? Oh, okay. 8.05. Alright, good enough. I'll try that. So I'll bring over the layout. Bring the 12 volts from the bus in here. This will go to the up to the toggle. Then from the toggle over to the terminal board that has both the tortoises hooked up. At least temporarily. I might have to move it out to the fascia at some point. But I just wanted to show that little itty bitty buck. They make boost as well. But yeah, okay, I'll try. Like I said, I can't resist tinkering with stuff. And they do make, if you, you might have seen the guy's video, but they also make more fancy schmancy boards with actual terminals for the in input, a little meter on it, which is fun. I think, yeah, I think you can even adjust the meter with this little push button here. That'll read input or output. Now this costs, I think, $6.95 for one of them. And I got it just to try it. But anyway, so that's cool stuff. Uh, now on this one, you have to solder onto the little tiny through-hole pads, which not a problem. You just got to be careful and solder it up. All right, let's get over the layout and see how it works. <laughs> okay, we're having some fun now. So I got this temporarily mounted over here. It's going to move, but just for now, just to try it out and see how it works. Sure, I got the 12 volts that I luckily had pretty close by. Input down through here. Mm -hmm. This is the normal reverse wire, double pull, double throw toggle. Over to the terminal board that's under there. See right now, I'm sitting at 8.7 volts. If I go ahead and throw it. Everything clicks over, 8.7, so all right. Now again, you know, is that the, the best voltage? I don't know, it doesn't really matter. If I really want to sit here and tweak it forever, I certainly can, but you kind of see how they throw. If I go back to normal. Yeah, okay. Could I tweak it and play with it? Yeah, am I gonna worry about it? No, not really, I got other things to do. All right, so that's just to show that. And again, this is probably all going to move because I'm also going to have some foam come in here to complete the scenery. So anyway, but for now, you know, it's there and you can normal reverse, throw it and have some good, have some fun. So, all right, so that's good to go. And like I said, this one's already wired up with this. That's I hope it works. Let's see. Yeah, i got to clean the points a little bit, doing some painting. The typical tortoise. And yeah, i got to get in there and clean things up a little bit, because I was in there doing some paint and, and whatnot, so i just got to clean it up. But, good to go. Okay, so there we go. So now it's time to get the, uh, uh, this little pad here for the head ties. You can see I already got two of them in down there. Get those set in, and then do the ballast. Which isn't much, just here, thankfully, because I hate doing ballast. Uh, oh, and this other turnout up there, so I could then get everything nice and cleaned up and do some final testing and clean the track. And at least this part's done, and I can move on to doing the buildings and getting the scenery working on. So, all right. Okay, let's get back to work. Where's that Cletus guy? He should be around somewhere. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up because I'm sure this video is way too long which means it's a normal video for me <laughs> so I got the uh, the ballasting done here it's all completed ballasted in I did add this little 
crosswalk here for the agent to get over to this side. Although, what I'm going to do, I'm going to say the railroad, again, they're not dispatcher controlled, but they did wire them back electrically you know, into the uh, operator's office. So the operator can throw them. It doesn't necessarily have to go out there and do hand throws. There was just too many delays to the freight traffic, or to train traffic, let's say. Uh, making them, you know, have the operator come out, walk over, and throw it. All right, so they'll be re they'll be remoted from inside the office there. I do have the details drying up. They're in the paint shop. The machines are going to have a switch stand here that gives the visual indication of the turnout. That'll all be added. So it's pretty much good to go. Like I said, it is kind of different in the way it growls and snaps. Bing! <laughs> but it all works, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Not going to get in there, i got to clean the track. Really got to clean the track, because you can see the evidence of... Oh, there's Cletus's barriers. <laughs> He's okay. And there's the Mod Podge, the wet water that was used. And so, it's, again, let's get in there, get some details done. I do need to get this crossing back in place here. Obviously, I gotta finalize the track work on this side over here. This turnout's in and it works fine. Not the fast tracks. It growls away nicely. Again, this is gonna have the uh, electric hand lock, so I have the head ties extended, and they're all painted up, ready to go in. Everything seems to work nice and smoothly, at least for. A rolling car, like I said, I gotta get the track cleaned. Ready to do much, and then so I'm gonna go. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm gonna get this posted because it's already too long of a babble fest. And next, what I'm gonna do is I gotta work on the track over here. You can see I got some templates out for the various buildings. What's gonna go where? I'm gonna put this building just like this. So I am. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure yet. What I'm gonna do? We're gonna put the larger building. That's the feed and grain building. What I'm going to do if I'm going to have room for the coal trestle, although I don't think I am. Eh. Maybe just a team track. I, I don't know. But anyway, but I don't need to get moving along on that. So that's it. That is the new crossover and the new, soon to be new arrangement of the industrial track here in Lake City. More to come. We'll get uh, keep moving on this. So I'd like to get this far enough along that I can get the, the front. One by four in, get I need to, I need to go out in Lowe's and get some probably one sheet. I may even need a whole darn sheet. I don't know. Of the uh, probably two inch pink foam to bolt that up the level and get that all moving along. Alright, anyway. Alright, shut up, Rob. Okay, more to come. That's it. Lake City making the mods. This is I guess a part one. I don't know. But uh, there it is. Nothing like uh, doing stuff and deciding to change it and redo everything when you think you're done. All right. More to come, folks. Thanks for watching.